Great Life Adventure is an admonition to have a hell of an adventure in our youth, in the, in the 20s, typically after college. So between 25 and 30 is the sweet spot. Head out into the world if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine too. But if you get even the slightest inkling that you need to do that, you want to do that, need is the right word, better do it. You will, re you will regret it if you don't. You might hide that fact. You might tell yourself that you got just by just fine, but you really did miss it. And uh, there's, there's a price to pay later, unfortunately. You can try to get it back later with uh, uh, cruises and timeshares and, you know, dude ranches and week, you know, week in Hawaii. To get a house in Mexico and retire in a community like that. None of it's going to be the same. You're not young anymore. The chance was lost. What can I say? I'm not really speaking to the old now. Your chance is, your chance is past. You can do your best to uh, mollify and, and comfort in the time that remains. This message is for the 20, early 20-somethings who feel that urge and are maybe wondering if they can take the courage, have the courage to do it. Do it, even if it costs you. Even if it costs you the head start that you might otherwise get if you wind up back at 30 and your peers that left college and started their career right away are five years ahead of you, maybe one or two rungs up the, the career ladder. Maybe they've already got a couple of years into the mortgage on the house and the kid has already arrived, the first, second one's on the way. And you've just come back and broken, beat, beat. <laughs> Lucky you. Lucky you. You got nothing. What a head start you've got. Starting from zero. Less than zero. Five years you spent pursuing that uh, great life adventure of yours. Everyone else is far ahead. Your folks are probably wondering when, when are he or she going to settle down in earnest and get started. They didn't know that uh, you've already put a put away something heavy. You've attended to the deep risk. Remember, I said, I said there were the two levels of risk: the deep level risk and the surface level risk. The surface level risk being school and educate, career, family, home, and security. The deep level risk of attending to any need that we may feel to uh, find ourselves to address that, that, that thing deep inside that's saying, what about me? Well, maybe it's a little selfish. The hippies were onto something, in fact, and it does look a little selfish. But if you've got that little voice that's What's, what about me asking that? And you don't pay attention to it. It's not going to shut up. Sure, you can stuff it, cover it up with a pillow. But you can still hear it down there. What about me? Later, on that effort that you make in your 60s, it's not going to shut up then either. But when you come back from your great life adventure, the what about me isn't really saying a question anymore. It's a statement. This is me. That was a good use of time. Even if you're back below zero on the other scale. 
it's a good use of time. You've you you've dealt with that deep risk. Now you're thirty. You've got decades ahead of you to attend to the uh, surface level stuff, and you won't have that pleading voice whispering. Instead, you'll have that uh, that that statement and that sense and that and that completion of something that the risk surface level stuff simply can't address. You can succeed wildly on all of those things and it would never satisfy that deep, that deep question. You've done it though. Good job. Next comes the season of philosophy. A time to record what we've learned along the way. To set it down when the words come. Like this morning, I wrote in my journal already. But then when I went to take a shower, uh, a word came, something else that I wanted to say. It was the sweet spot of the journal. Right? It was mundane. It was a mundane paragraph of what I did yesterday. And then suddenly, something, the bigger thought came. And the bigger thought about how this is the one I was talking about before that that became when I first started about how the 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 paradigm can have have, have some depth to it. And I'm not saying it now. See how it passes? The moment passes, right? It's the season it's the season of philosophy because it's a brief season. I'm not talking about like being sixty and being able to say say interesting things for your entire decade. I'm talking about the fact that the muse shows up all of a sudden like it's an atmospheric effect not really it's just a you know a, a little a little electrical storm in our brain but the muse shows up and the muse says hey i got something interesting to say <laughs> here's a few words for you blah you better have a pen and something to write on handy to get it down because it'll pass and it's passed for me but i did get it down i actually trotted right back over from uh, the restroom you know, fresh out of the shower, wearing a towel around my waist. Okay, I didn't have a towel. <laughs> no one's up. Emily's not even here. I sat down and I wrote down what, the, what it was. I got it out. So if I if I encounter this that journal entry for uh, um, May twenty, what is it, the twenty second, uh, two thousand twenty first, two thousand twenty two. And if I read that whole paragraph through, Monday, 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 Monday what the hell? Because I got the muse struck like lightning right there at the end. That's the season of philosophy. Keeping the pen and writing utensils ready and early. And that is another consequence of the great life adventure. That is something that came as a result of the fact that I, I did, I, I, I love this word, assuaged deep level risk at an early age and now it pays dividends in my old age bam 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 it comes back you know it's like planting seeds early early on that then that just come back so the season of philosophy and the great life adventure go hand in hand if you don't have much of a great life adventure at any point in your life um the season of philosophy will uh, be a what would it be It'll be halcyon days of, of uh, that's too harsh a word, dull sunshine. Nice days, not bad, right? I mean, in a way, you're kind of lucky because, uh, because uh, you know, having lived attending only to the surface level risks, you've got a, a nice, comfortable home and family and security and and a good career where an honest, solid citizen who you can go down with a, a gravestone that says, um, you know, you know, beloved father, you know, beloved mother, and leave it at that. But that's halcyon. That's that's not that's not unpleasant. But, but if you've had the great life adventure, or several then uh, this latter years become uh, punctuated by lightning strikes of the best sense. You know, 
what the hell was that? You know, get him, get him out of the pit. Oh, gee, holy crap. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Right? I, I could be wrong. Those lightning strikes may come in a different way for those that, that don't attend, that don't have this interest. There's people that don't have this at all. But this has been my experience so far. Mm. I don't think that I would be inclined to these lightning strikes if it wasn't for the disposition that I, I, I basically is part of my nature and uh, the resulting life that I chose to live. Hmm. It's good to address those early desires at an early age for a lifetime of uh, consequence and benefit.